It's finally here, guys. Captain Marvel. And we're going to review it. Right now, on Miscast Entertainment. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Get to the Boat. Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment Movie Reviews with your host, Daisy Von Dutch. Hey guys, in the house, my favorite channel on YouTube. And your other host, William Davis Moore, imbued with the cosmic powers of the universe. And Miscast Entertainment. <laughs> Alright guys, we just saw Captain Marvel, the long-awaited and controversial Marvel movie that just came out, and we're going to give it a little bold uh, review. So, yeah. what do you think about that? It is 124 minutes long, and it costs $152 million to make, which, by this day and age, is a drop in the bucket. How about that Rotten Tomato score? Oh my gosh, so Rotten Tomatoes gave, or oh, Tomatoes rather, should I say, um, Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 81%. Your IMDB gave it a 6.6 .6 out of 10. And then just for shits and giggles, so you know, there's actually a Google user's review, so they got a 72% thumbs up. Um, overall, really good. Google reviews, man. Did people even yeah. use that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get right into the... Logistics. It is directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck. They did Mississippi Grind back in 2015 with Ryan Reynolds and Ben Mendelsohn. So they've worked with old Ben before. I guess you can see pieces of that in this movie. But let's get right into who stars as Captain Marvel. It stars Brie Larson as Veers or Carol Danvers. She won an Academy Award for Best Actress and a Golden Globe for Room, where she played Ma, this uh, woman that lives in a room for a long time and has like a boy from a rapist. It's crazy, man. Did you know that everybody figured she was cast too young because at 26, they're like, you know, you can't be old enough to be a test pilot for the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess those are like 28 to like 30 something. Um, yeah. When your eyesight is at its prime, basically. I mean, you're a pilot. What do you think? Well, you got to do your time, man. You got to put in your hours. You have to build up the experience. And yes, eyesight is is in incredibly important, but right. you still need the experience, like much of anything else. It, it takes some time to build up. And typically, 26 is still fairly young. However, I mean, you could go into the military straight out of high school. I don't know. How old do you think Tom Cruise was when he did Top Gun? Oh my days! He was like twenty years old. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he. I think he was younger than. He was either twenty six or younger. I don't know. If you guys know, drop it in the comments because I'm curious. The other cool thing though is, man, she did the workout. You know, she she hooked it up. She like pushed uh, what jeeps up hills. Uh, she deadlifted two hundred fifty pounds. She did hip raises with four hundred and some pounds, which is freaking nuts, especially for her size, man. Yeah. I imagine she just had an intravenous like chicken delivery right into her bloodstream. <laughs> hey, check out in the future. Miscast muscles coming soon. We got <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson, the legend as Nicholas Fury, not Nick Fury, because this is before he became the infamous Nick Fury. He is best known as the man that coined the term motherfucker. Motherfucker, motherfucker. We're not gonna store the motherfucker. motherfucker. I'm on the motherfucker. Motherfucker, motherfucker. I'm a mushroom cloud laying motherfucker, motherfucker, motherfucker. Where's my motherfucking chemist? God damn it! Waste the motherfuckers! Yeah, I said it. Waste the motherfuckers. <laughs> We've also Correct. got Ben Mendelssohn as Talos. This dude has an obsession with movies that end in one. Because he was the freaking main villain in Ready Player One and the main villain in Rogue One. Bow, bow, bow. We've got Jude Law as Jan Rog, or Eggnog, as I like to think of him. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes are kind of the color of Eggnog. <laughs> uh, yeah. he's, he's best known as Sky Captain in Sky Captain uh, and the World of Tomorrow. Best movie of all time. Also has another Marvel grade in it. Gwyneth Paltrow. What? Yeah, she was the love interest. This also stars everybody's favorite, Clark Gregg, 
as Phil Coulson. Hey, for all you uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fans out there on the old TV, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will be back on television in May of 2019. And although Coulson, spoilers, uh, had a little bit of an end in season five, season six, he will be a hologram and an unknown character. Yay! Um, We've got a newcomer, Lashana Lynch as Maria Rambu. Uh, she's a British lassie who's got a recurring role on the TV crime drama Bulletproof. Uh, I've never seen it, but you you said you've seen it. No, I saw snippets for it and um, little bits and pieces, and I, I think it's really cool, and I would actually like to sit down and, and watch it proper. Jaman Honsu reprises his role from Guardians of the Galaxy as Korath, uh, probably best known for playing Horus in 1994's Stargate. And we have the lovely and amazing Annette Benning as the Supreme Intelligent and Mar Vell. Bell. Which is a yeah. shocker to many fans, but we'll get into that. Um, yeah. She freaking absolutely killed it. I'm just going to throw this down. I'm not even going to joke with her. She absolutely killed it as Carolyn in American Beauty, man. We got Lee Pace returning as Ronan the Accuser. And this mother killed it as Phil Winslow in the classic Marmaduke. Marmaduke. <laughs> All right, you crazy bastards. Thanks for sticking with us through that. What kind of makeup are you wearing to honor uh, Captain Marvel? A little homage, shout out to the American colors and then the gold, red, and blue. You know, you know. Lovely. Some, some. So, what are your happy thoughts <laughs> overall really liked this movie a lot i did i really did there's some really this great humor in it um of course i can't really speak to the, the all the great special effects because i i've got i've grown accustomed to them that's it's it's expected now it's like part of the the package so great effects needless to say um yeah so on the positive side Great, great characters, great relationships, great, great story. And it, I love the humor. I love when there's humor and they had a lot of humor in this. Um, yeah. So what are your positive thoughts? And then I'll give you my negative thoughts. <laughs> I like the way you said negative. Overall, I, I thought this movie kicked ass. Um, it had a lot of problems, you know, and it felt more like a uh, phase one movie than, than a phase three movie for Marvel. But, you know, I thought it was a great roller coaster ride and, and all I care about, honestly, when I go to see a superhero superhero film, is to just see uh, a movie that makes me feel like I'm on a ride. Uh, I want yeah. to. They all have the same story arc. They all have the same character development. They all have the same, you know, stuff in them. So I don't expect much. And even if they have a little twist, it's not enough to change the entire arc of the movie. So I just expect to be like good paced, good fun, good jokes. The way Marvel does it, they kill it. You know, DC yeah. has been trying to emulate that, but. That's just the way it is. So uh, my, my pluses big time are obviously with you, like the effects. Uh, this, I absolutely love the Marvel Space Universe. Um, I love the way they do it with the colors and just how everything is. The shapes and colors and designs are just fantastic. The whole design of it is amazing. I want to throw to you, though. Uh, what did you think of Talos, man? I mean, Ben Mendelsohn, I think he stole the show from Brie Larson. I think that his yeah. character, at the end of the day, had more to say as a character than she did. It, yeah, I mean, there were little subtle innuendos and things, that, but he did. He did do a really good job of it. I guess he did give a bit more to the story than she actually did. Um, however, it was great. I'm a chick. I'm voting for a chick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So, all right. So, as a chick, you know, a lot of girls like cats. The cat stole the show as well, but only, only when the cat was with Nick Fury, because those two had some serious chemistry, man. Yep. But make no mistake, he's he's totally loyal to Carol Danvers, man. The major thing, in my opinion, that kicked the most butt in the whole movie wasn't even in the movie. It was in the beginning of the movie before the movie even started, and that was the tribute to Stan Lee when they yeah. changed the entire intro of the Marvel logo to freaking honor the Marvel great Stan Lee. Let's yeah. all take a moment of silence. <laughs> Stan, you rock, brother. 
All right, yeah. All right, so what didn't you like? Um, I didn't... Okay, so I know that they change stories up all the time and, and you know, a different universe, all that type of stuff. Um, one thing that did stand out to me is the fact that uh, in the comics, Miss Marvel got involved with Captain Marvel on a romantic level and there was a battle that went on and you know their genetic material confused or what and that's how she got her powers and in in the the movie we just watched it was due to the uh the you know the core the energy core or whatnot that she, that blew up and then she got exposed and absorbed all the energy and then developed her powers etc so there was a, a you know a little bit of a disconnect between the comic and the actual movie it still fell into a good storyline but if you're a diehard fan it's like what what the hey man so there was that um yeah. and it's honestly i think that was pretty much my main dislike was that point um but yeah they, they still made it work they made it work into the story completely it was good i have a whole slew of things i didn't like because you know uh, as a wannabe filmmaker myself and uh, the you know the channel guy here, uh, lover of all this stuff, uh, it's hard to not see like the worst parts like stick out like broken pieces of a nice piece of glass. Even though the glass is like beautiful in itself, like you can see all the cracks so easily because the glass is nice. Um, so I felt like this was obviously like a phase one flick. I didn't feel like it had it all together. I felt like it was. A little bit of Thor, a little bit of Iron Man, a little bit of not so much Iron Man, but like, uh, you know, the other ones where they all started off and they kind of didn't know where the the MCU was going at the time. I feel like this movie didn't really know where it was going, um, but I felt like it wasn't going in the right direction. So I don't really have a big problem with that. Um, the story didn't fill in enough stuff. My major thing, though, with the character of Carol Danvers was she's just always a badass. Like, she's not even a Mary Sue, you know? Like, a Mary Sue, she would just learn everything and automatically get it. She just was already awesome to begin with, so she didn't really have an arc. Like, what was her arc? I mean, she didn't even really have a big bad to defeat. I mean, the big bad became her ally. So, like, who was the big bad at that point? Like, her the old mentor? Yeah, the Cree. There yeah, was that scene. That but he had nothing end. on her. Like. <laughs> No. Did but you ever feel she was in danger ever in the movie? Ever. Ever at one point did you feel like she was in danger? Not really, no. No. No, because she was already awesome at everything. And then when she yeah. finally realized her potential, she just became more awesome. And right. and and that's that leads me to my next thing. Like she's way too powerful for the MCU way too powerful like she smashed through ships that gave uh guardians of the galaxy an entire movie worth of shit smashing through an accuser ship an accuser ship you know ronin's ships uh right basically almost took out an entire planet last time we saw them uh she smashed through them like they were like paper towels thor has limits you know Hulk has limits. Iron Man has limits. Captain America has limits. You got to have limits if you have power. Like the Hulk has Banner as a limit. You know, uh, Thor has uh, his his power from his weapons. And he doesn't realize that now he has the Odin force, which is now the Thor force. He That's his limit. You know, in, in the first movie with Thor, they even took his power away just to give him something to do. Danvers never had a moment where she had to realize her power. Like she had to like come to terms with like what she could do, but she never had to realize her power. She never had to like, like own it. I really wish that they would have thrown in a scene where she accidentally killed somebody she cared about or something to that effect where it capped off her power where she in her mind thought I can never go full power because <laughs> going full power in a universe where you're like a God, like what? Hopefully something happened in the, you know, 20 years that we don't know about that we're because she's going to be in Endgame next month. As we mm -hmm. saw, she answered the text. You know? Right. But o other than that, uh, uh, my, my last thing and my only other thing is not enough Coulson. And uh, th they never even called her Captain Marvel. So what's the point of calling the movie Captain Marvel? 
Fair enough. All right. Uh, let's go with some fun facts. You got any fun facts? So I, I have a, a short list. There's a lot more to this than what I'm going to bring to the table. Okay. But just a couple of fun ones that I did actually pick up on and notice is uh, the epic and uh, now infamous Stan Lee. Um, he actually had two cameos in this movie as opposed to just one in, as, as this being the regular routine. Uh, the one was in the, he was reading the mole rat screenplay in the uh, subway scene. And then the other one, he actually made some eye contact with Captain Marvel on the train, the subway train. So that was cool. Um, here's a secret one that, that um, a lot of people may or may not have known. I unless want to you know. Die. And, was Monica Rambo, who is actually the daughter of Maria in this movie, in this Captain Marvel uh, rendition. Um, she also uh, took on the mantle of Captain Marvel at some point. And um, so, you know, they did a shot where her mom is in her jet with the uh, the call sign photon was in there. Yeah. And uh, we can probably expect that photon is going to come up in the future because she has been under a couple of different aliases in the past. The Pegasus. So Pegasus in the comics is actually um, different from the Pegasus here. The Tesseract was uh, being studied to develop, you know, light speed. Um, what was it? To get faster than light speed uh, force and drive. But right. in the comics, Pegasus actually um, uh, stood for potential energy alternative source United States. So there was a little, right. you know, little twist there. Then one of my favorites was Goose. Goose the cat. The cat <laughs> was kind of like a little throwback, you know, to the Top Gun Series thing, um, the co-pilot. He was in the in the in the plane doing his little co-pilot kitty cat stuff. So yeah, Goose is really wicked cool. But Goose in the comics is actually called Chewy. Still a flurkin, nonetheless badass flurkin. <laughs> All that crazy weird shit. That's their superpower. That they are badass, but they're cute. That flurkins are known to present like cute kitty cat, blah, blah, and then blah, all this octopusy weird shit comes out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and they'll kill your ass. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Like the Kraken and shit. <laughs> the Kraken. Yeah, right. seriously, like the Kraken. <laughs> and then the other uh, little hidden secret. Well, I mean, you could have seen that was the uh, call sign on uh, Carol Danvers's plane, which had the Avengers written in it, which uh, prompted Nick Fury to call his first phase protocol Avengers, da, da, da. And then, you know, um, the, the, the costume, that's the other thing. The costume when uh, the little one, um, Monica Rambo was adjusting the costume and it, it, it was throwbacks to all the other characters in the costumes before. So that was pretty cool, I think. Nice. Yes. So yes. a couple of little fun facts there for you if you hadn't picked up on that. Yeah, that was cool, actually. I didn't know that, um, that the costumes that they were going through, the different designs were different iterations of Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel. I thought that was pretty sweet. The one thing I'm I'm a little bit torn on since, you know, we're at the end of likes and dislikes. I have a like and dislike both. Um, I liked that they did the comedic thing with Nick Fury's eye, but at the same time, I freaking hate it. Yeah. I wish that that thing would have done something more vicious to his eye than just scratched it. He was just way too nonchalant about like, oh, I just... You know, that was another good joke from, from old uh, Ben uh, Mendelssohn's character was, uh, nah, you lost that eye. Like, he's like, it's just a scratch. He's like, nah. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah. He's yeah. the whole time he's been saying, like, that alien is a nasty bastard. Like, yeah. nah. <laughs> so, Mr. Aviator glasses, what rating would you give this movie? I'm going to give this sucker a B minus. And that's because it feels like a phase one Marvel movie from 2008 to 2011. And this this is a phase three uh, time in Marvel, and they can do better. But I still had a good time. How about you? Yeah, I had a really good time. I had a really good time. And uh, if you're going to go with school grades, I'm going to give it a B. And uh, it's going to be chalked up to a lot of the great humor that was in there. A lot of the uh, 90s throwback kickbacks, Nine Inch Nails, the flannels, the Radio Shack, I mean, the beeper, that kind of stuff. I, I had a good laugh. I really had a yeah. good laugh. 
All right, guys. So that's our review of Marvel's Captain Marvel. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and you know what's even crazier? In like, what, a month or two? Or I think it's what April? Uh, we're getting another Captain Marvel movie, except this time they're calling it Shazam. But it's still Captain Marvel. All right, guys. You know the routine if you know us. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell next to it so you get notified of all future content. And check us out on all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Miss Cast Entertainment, obviously. And share us with your friends. I just like to give yes. a special thanks to Daisy Von Dutch for coming to us live from <laughs> Seattle. Live for yeah. us, recorded for you. <laughs> and we'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. Hey, let's see that pimp ass opening one more time. Right now on Miscast Entertainment.